Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to be discussing reactivity with water as a property that exists for a range of different elements and that's something that we can observe across the periodic table. So firstly, we're going to uh, remind ourselves or identify specific signs of a reaction with water. So when we're talking about metals and then non-metals, what are some things that we can observe that suggest the reaction with water has taken place? And then there's three main groups of the periodic table that we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on group one, the alkali metals, group two, the alkaline earth metals, and lastly, group seven, the halogens. Okay, so when we're starting by focusing on the signs of a reaction of a metal with water, we'll come back to think about non-metals a little bit later. But so there's three main things that we can tell, or three things that, that occur each time. The first one is that if we add an acid base indicator, so this one of these chemicals that if we put it in solution, it changes color as the acidity changes, we get a color change. Uh, that is because the solution becomes what we say basic or alkaline is the other word. And so um, we can see in this image here that this is an indicator called phenolphthalein. I'll try saying that 10 times fast. Um, but it starts off colorless and then turns to pink as the solution becomes basic, which is very much the case in these reactions. Secondly, we see bubbles of hydrogen gas forming. Okay, so you can notice as with the metal, the reaction has proceeded, that we get more and more effervescence. So specifically, it's hydrogen, not just bubbles of any gas, but we can confirm that it's hydrogen. And lastly, the one that often makes this very interesting to see on other YouTube videos, that the reaction is often very explosive, um, especially um, with a lot of the alkali metals. Now, not always, but often. So these three things tend to be... Um, yeah, or at least we might say it's vigorous at least. These three things tend to, to be the things that we can observe that suggest that this metal has reacted with water. So if we focus on the group one or alkali metals, okay, so we're looking at things like lithium, potassium, sodium. Okay, so if we're looking at, um, so, so two kind of examples, we've got sodium and potassium. Um, lithium is very violently reactive with water. Um, and as is potassium and kind of the reactivity increases as we go down. Okay, but so these are the chemical equations for these reactions. Okay, now at, at this stage, well, we're going to come back to think about chemical equations a bit later um, in terms of being able to construct these yourself. But for now, we can see that we have um, atoms. So if we just, if I back that up for a second, look at sodium. We've got two atoms of sodium react with two molecules of water to form two lots of this compound sodium hydroxide is called and then hydrogen gas. And we can see that potassium is very similar. Basically, wherever we see Na in that first one, we swap it out for K um, to, in the second one. Everything else is identical. So we can generalize this to say that, okay, if we call M a general metal, that we get two lots of M reacting with two water to form two lots of MOH plus hydrogen gas always being produced. So this is the, this is the general pattern that we would see. Now, if we look at the alkaline earth metals or group two, things like magnesium and calcium and barium and strontium, if we look at calcium, we see a very similar um, chemical equation, but we get one calcium and two water reacting to form calcium hydroxide, which looks a little bit different um, in its formula, but also hydrogen gas being made. So I want you to notice that in this formula that we have one calcium and two hydroxide as a ratio of, of things in that formula. We see the same thing if we look at barium. Same, you know, same as before. We can swap out BA for CA and everything looks very similar. But so the ratio of the metal to the water is different. Um, and that we'll, we'll revisit that when we come to look at what we call stoichiometry or the ratio of things combining in a chemical reaction. But so the if, in same sort of process with a general reaction that we get one lot of our metal, one atom of metal, with two water molecules forming MOH2 plus hydrogen gas again. Okay, so we, we see in each of these situations, there's quite a predictable pattern of how these metals react with water and also what kind of equation that they give off. Now, group the group two elements are not as reactive with water as group one. You know, group one is explosively, violently, very rapidly and vigorously reactive, whereas the group two elements um, are significantly less so. 
they will react, but some, for example, like magnesium, won't react with water at room temperature. It has to be steam. Um, you know, calcium is, it reacts with water, but it's, it's, it's slower and a lot less vigorous than a sample of sodium, for example. Okay, so we see that there is a difference in their reactivity, but we see also some common ground um, with these types of metals. But there's lots of other metals in our periodic table that don't react with water. Um, you know, whether it's steam, whether it's liquid water or not. Um, now, we're only really focusing on group one and two because there's distinct um, similarities in these groups, whereas across other areas of the periodic table, it varies a bit more. Um, some metals will rust or corrode or react with water in that way, um, whereas others won't. Um, some, you know, won't react with water under any circumstances, whereas others will under particular ones. So um, these are the ones that have a more specific pattern to identify. But now if we start to have a look at non-metals, thinking, okay, well, we've only got, you know, about a quarter of the periodic table, maybe 20% are non-metals versus the 80% or so that are metals. And so what we're going to see with non-metals reacting with water is going to be a bit different, okay? It's, it's not a, a really well-identified, consistent pattern. Um, you know, some, not every non-metal will react with water, and of those that do, um, that they tend to, we tend to produce a substance that is acidic rather than basic, but the way that reaction looks can vary a lot. Um, so we're going to go through two kind of examples in group seven to just illustrate that point. But so rather than making an alkaline or a basic solution, we get acids being formed um, as the general kind of principle. Um, but uh, um, and as, as I mentioned before, many nonmetals would not react with water at all. So if we're focusing, we're going to focus on two examples of the halogens, okay? Because group seven, the halogens are very reactive as non-metals go. They are the most reactive. And so if, if any elements are going to react with water, these will be the ones. So the first one we're going to focus on is fluorine, which is arguably the most reactive element in the periodic table. It will react with anything that it touches and typically in a very vigorous or violent way. So fluorine gas, so it exists as these pairs of fluorine atoms that stick together to make a molecule, react with water to form what, this compound called HF, or hydrofluoric acid, and also oxygen gas. Fluorine is so reactive that it can actually push the oxygen atoms out of water to then make them form as this separate gas. It is, that's a very unusual thing to see. And then hydrofluoric acid. If you've ever seen any, um, some of the early episodes of Breaking Bad, uh, it forms a starring role in this rather gruesome scene. Okay, but see then if we look at chlorine, um, probably probably the next most reactive halogen, um, just one down in that group, that the reaction with water here is very different. What we get, um, oh sorry, I realise that's a typo, that should say aqueous, AQ. Um, but so chlorine gas reacts with water, but we get a mixture of what we call hydrochloric acid and then um, hypochlorous acid, HOCl. Um, now, you don't need to know that formula in particular, but it's just showing here that this is we've got a quite a different thing going on, that chlorine is not as reactive as fluorine. It can't push the oxygen atoms out like fluorine can, so we end up with a very different set of products. But both of these are acidic, and same with hydrofluoric acid over here. Um, so, you know, to, to illustrate that example of what I was saying before, they do tend to be acidic rather than basic. Um, but there is, you know, even just with these two examples, there's no set pattern. We could identify some principles in the group one and group two metals, but these ones are not as simple and straightforward. Um, so that does make it a bit more difficult, but also we take each one on its own, on a case by case basis. Okay, so we recapped to look at a sign of a reaction with water, particularly looking at metals because they are more consistent, where we see bubbles of hydrogen gas, we see the solution becomes basic, and a vigorous or explosive reaction in most situations. Um, we saw that the group 1 or alkali metals um, gave off this particular equation, whereas the group 2 alkaline earth metals gave off a, a similar but different equation, looking at different some of the numbers and the formulas are a little bit different based on those differences in groups, whereas we saw that the group 7 halogens had no consistent pattern or set reaction that they did. Okay, so we've seen that, that reactivity with water is something that has some certain patterns um, that, that we do see some difference across the periodic table. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.